If you've ever wondered what a nuclear power plant looks like, or how the heck a nuclear power plant even works in the first place, you're in luck, because the first ever nuclear power plant is open for tours. Located in between the tiny towns of Idaho Falls and Arco in Idaho, the Experimental Breeder Reactor 1 was built in 1949. And just years later, atomic energy was successfully harvested for the first time ever, lighting up four 200-watt light bulbs. The very next day, energy from the reactor was used to light the entire building. Naturally, things weren't always smooth sailing for the first ever nuclear power plant. It suffered a partial meltdown in 1955 in the middle of a test. Scientists were able to identify the problem and repair the reactor, but in the grand scheme of things, the EBR-1 wasn't in use for very long. It got decommissioned in 1963 and was replaced with the bigger, badder Experimental Breeder Reactor 2. Thankfully, people didn't just forget about the EBR-1. It was declared a National Historic Landmark in 1965, and it's been open to the public for tours since 1976. When you visit, you can get a glimpse inside the reactor control room, remote handling devices for the radioactive materials, vintage radiation detection equipment, and not one, not two, but four nuclear reactors, two of which were prototypes for nuclear propulsion for aircraft. The museum's open every day between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., and it's totally free. For more of the world's coolest museums, subscribe to Road Trippers Insider and visit roadtrippers.com. In this video of C.3, we're going to look at how plutonium-239 uses a fuel in breeder reactors is produced from uranium-238 by neutron capture. So the first one there, just a, a think back when we look at the natural abundance of the different isotopes of uranium, we find that uranium-238 is the most uh, abundant. But again, it's not really one that we can actually use in a um, uranium nuclear reactor because it doesn't undergo the fission reaction that um, is a chain reaction. So what we were doing as scientists is figuring out, can we still use this uranium-238? Well, yes, we can. So what happens is you can start with uranium-235 um, and splitting that and producing some neutrons. And then what happens is those neutrons can hit the more abundant uranium-238. That will cause it to absorb and become uranium-239. And that one becomes a little less stable. And so uranium-239 undergoes beta emission, which turns one of its um, neutrons into protons. And so now we have um, a new element, neptunium. Now neptunium will then decay under beta emission again um, by turning one of its neutrons into protons. And we end up with plutonium. Now plutonium-239, that one we can actually undergo um, a fission reaction that releases the energy. In other words, instead of using uranium-235 to power the power plant, we can use uranium-239. So a breeder reactor is kind of like, you know, if you think of breeding in the biological sense, it's like creating new, um, new materials um, from materials that were initially not useful. So the reaction here is that um, other neutrons, when they impact plutonium-239, and again, we can get those from uranium-235, um, or another source if we wanted to, uh, that will split into a barium and strontonium, and it will actually... Um, cause a chain reaction. So you need an initial bullet, but once it starts, um, it can create the chain reaction and hit other plutonium. So some reactors work that way. Now there's a few sort of, you know, drawbacks to this. Again, um, plutonium-239 is toxic as it naturally will undergo alpha decay if, if we're not bombarding it with neutrons. And so alpha decay is like the um, the helium nucleus, so that will you know damage skin and an organic material quite uh, quite easily. The more concentrated from reactor grade to weapons grade easily. So in other words, we can make weapons more easily. They're actually slightly less efficient than uranium reactors, um, just because you have um, to collect a lot of the same materials, but then you have to go through more processes to get the fissionable material. Uh, and this one uses metal as, as coolant. So you don't have to, to know this, but here's the, a breeder reactor core. Now normally in a uranium um, core, water would be circulated as part of the way to cool it down. Um, but water, especially they use deuterium heavy water, 
um, slows down the neutrons to control the reaction. Well, sodium is used here because they don't want to slow it down as much, and uh, so they use liquid metal as coolants, such as sodium. And obviously that's extremely reactive, and uh, in the past, um, for example, in Japan, there has been, you know, breaches where liquid sodium um, escapes, and that caused um, a couple deaths and things like that. Um, and also, like uranium, it produces some radioactive byproducts of the process that we have to dispose of, which is covered in another video.